Number one reason I stopped publishing low content books was because of a category issue. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what types of books I switched to publishing that make me thousands of dollars a month on Amazon KDP and my process of how to create this type of book. Hey, is a glare in these glasses? Because it looks like it's a glare in it. So just take them off right quick. So if you follow this channel, then you probably heard me mention that although my account has now been reinstated, a little while back, my KDP account had been suspended and terminated. And the reason was because of a category issue. And when you publish a book on Amazon, you'll need to select a category. This is much like um, when you go to the bookstore and your book is in the appropriate section on the shelf. And since no content and low content books are generally blank or have repetitive lines inside like a journal would, then you can only base your book category off of your book cover or the theme of your book. So if you have a garden cover, then maybe your book would go in a garden category or whatever you believe the best category is. The problem, however, is that there is no exact category for low content books. Even when I switched my low content books to writing categories, I still didn't feel like the issue would be resolved. So instead of guessing and taking all those risks, I was like, you know what, I got the solution. I'm getting ready to unpublish every single last one of these low content books that I have published. And I'm only gonna focus on what's called medium content books. So what are medium content books? Amazon describes medium content books as things like activity books and coloring books. Books that generally do not have repetitive content inside like the journal lines would. As a disclaimer, if you publish low content books and you love it, that's your thing, this video is not to discourage you from continuing to publish those types of books. This video is simply telling you why I stopped. I started focusing on publishing high quality coloring books. Coloring books that not only resonate with my audience, but also aligns with my values as a creator. But focusing on coloring books for me is not just about being able to provide value for my audience, but it was about a deeper decision. Something that speaks to the very core of why we create. What do I love and what truly resonates with me? Welcome back to this Bible time with Toya Chat. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So all of your decisions are determined by what's in your heart. The heart is like the inner core of your being. So think of an apple. The outside of the apple is the body of the apple, but inside of the apple is where the core is. Your natural body houses your heart, and the spirit of your heart is the seat or the core of your identity. There are only two spirits that can rule over this heart, good or evil. Your relationship with Christ shapes your identity. It guides your desires, your emotions, and even your relationships. It also guides your thoughts and what comes out of you. I was thinking about how I could relate this on a basic level when talking about creating coloring books. And I thought about my most recent book. When I created this book, I intentionally wanted it to be therapeutic and speak to married couples. So much so, I told my illustrator, I was like, every, fin every finger that's showing, make sure you have a ring on it because I wanted to remind the person coloring in the book that the book is about covenant and relationship. So the illustrations were created to reinforce love and compassion toward one another. And a lot of times we don't realize just how much of what we consume influences us. And I want the content that I create to reflect the core value of my belief so that others that consume it can be positively impacted. So what is the foundation you use to gauge your ideas through? What's in your heart? Start understanding who God says you are and identifying your unique gifts. Then create content around those things. That's the first thing I do when creating my coloring books when I'm trying to figure out the type of book I'll create. For me, one of the things I'm good at is providing a therapeutic outlet for women. With me knowing this, I already know that my book ideas will be for women and the young girls that look up to those women. So I go ahead and write down every single idea that comes to mind. And from there, I start narrowing down the ideas by validating them. Let's take a look. So I'll come to Amazon with a list of ideas that I already have written down. Most of the time, I put my ideas in my publishing planner 
or either on a sheet of paper just so I can have them organized and I can start going through them one by one. And let's say animal coloring book is on my list of ideas. You see how phrases start popping up. These are ideas that people have actually searched for. This helps me to validate my search because now I know that this is something other people already want. This means that there's already demand created so you don't have to work as hard when you are marketing your book because people are already searching for this type of book. So I'll go ahead and start typing in animal coloring and then I can see animal coloring book, animal coloring book for kids, animal coloring book for adults, for toddlers one through three. And so then I could just start checking things off of my list saying, okay, this is in demand, put a little check mark by that and then keep going down my list. Once I have everything validated and I have a couple of checks beside some of the ideas letting me know that they're in demand, then what I do to narrow it down even further is ask myself, are there any holidays coming up? Any trends happening that would make sense for me to publish this specific type of book right now? For example, again, when I publish this book, Valentine's Day was getting ready to come up. So it made sense for me to publish this book during that time. Then after I have my idea nailed down to help me figure out some of the types of images that'll go inside of the book, I'll go to ChatGPT and say something like, give me 24 ideas for an ABC animal coloring book for girls. So now let's head over to Midjourney so you can see my process of generating those images. So I typed in my backslash imagine, of course, because you have to start all prompts with that. And then I typed in kids coloring page illustration, comma, elephant, comma, savannas, comma, cartoon style, comma, thick lines, low detail. And then I was able to get this image here and I upscaled it and I went ahead and saved so that I could start working with this image inside of Canva. So when you get to Canva, what I like to do is a general search for um, coloring book template just to get some ideas of what some of these coloring books look like. Now, some of these are pretty plain and simple coloring books that you can just look through for inspiration. Something might grab your attention, but what I will suggest is only use these for inspiration. Whatever you're going to create will pull coloring books that are already selling on Amazon as well, okay? And so now we can go ahead and um, create a design. We're gonna do custom size and the coloring book is going to be um, eight and a half by 11 inches. So we'll go ahead and create new design. Now I'm gonna be working from a template that I've already created. Um, the template that I use when I'm creating my personal coloring book, so I always do a blank page. And then the next page is where you'll put your title information, your name, and your copyright information. And then the next page that I do is usually a this book belongs to page, then another blank page, and then I start here, my template that's already pre-made so that I know that I'm not gonna be going outside of any of the margins. Then I'll go ahead and bring in my elephant and I just fill it up and make sure it fits inside of that template, just like that. Can even bring it down if that's what I want it to do. And then you can even make it into an activity sheet if that's something you're interested in. Um, that way the child can draw in the elements. E is for elephant. So then once you have all your pages together, this would be your interior file. So you will go ahead and download that and save that as a PDF standard. For the cover, always use KDP cover calculator. I'll do paperback, the interior black and white, go through everything according to the dimensions that I wanna set. And then I will go to um, calculate dimension. Now all the links that I'm mentioning in the video, I'll actually leave those links in the description below. So this is gonna give me my full cover, which is 17.372 by 11.25. So I'm just gonna take those dimensions and enter that into Canva to start working on my cover. I'll go to create a new design, and then I'll go ahead and enter in those, those dimensions. This gives me my blank cover template. I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring in my design. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the background color. Usually I'll just pull from one of the colors that's already in the photo. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so that I know to keep putting out more content like this.
So this is just a general example so that you can see the process of what you would do in order to create a coloring book. I do take a deep dive on the exact process step by step of how you would be able to create the coloring book in my coloring book course at bookbaguniversity.com. And if you want to see how to upload your coloring book after you save this as a PDF document, then I'll link that video for you so you can watch that next. Because I do go step by step walking you through the process, but essentially what you would do is head over to kdp.amazon.com. Click on the create tab to start creating your paperback book. Complete all three sections. Make sure you select your appropriate categories, which would be the coloring book category. Then choose your pricing. You can look at other coloring books in your niche to kind of gauge what you may want to charge and then um, compare it to what you want your royalty to be. Read over the terms and conditions and then publish your paperback book. So create books that are a balanced combination of your identity, your experiences, your knowledge, and the needs of your target audience. And listen, you may even need to be a forerunner and carve out your own niche. Like mix some niches together to make your book stand out. Or you may want to create for an audience that shares similar experiences to you. If you're an introvert, then maybe you want to make a coloring book for introverts. Find your tribe. Listen, it's people out there that's just like you waiting for your book to be published. But ultimately, understanding who you are can guide you with finding your niche and your community. So what's in your heart? What's directing your course? Set a direction for yourself and actively steer your life in that direction. Thanks so much for liking and for sharing this video. And let me know if you'll be publishing medium content books like coloring books. Until next time, bye-bye.